The um, Grub and Grumble Steeplechase by Henry Lawson. Twixt the coastline and the border lay the town of Grub and Grumble in the days afore the bushman was a dull and heartless drudge. And they say the local meeting was a drunken run from tumble which was ended very often by an inquest on the judge. And they say the city talent very often caught a tartar in the grog and grumbled starter and retired with broken heads. For the fortune, life and safety of the grog and grumble starter mostly hung upon the finish of the local thoroughbreds. Pat Maderma was the owner of a horse they called the Screamer which he called a quickish step atwixt the darling and the tea. And I think it very doubtful if this stomach-troubled dreamer ever saw a more outrageous be uh, ever saw a more outrageous piece of equine scenery. For its points were most designed from its end to its beginning. It had eyes of different colours and his legs they wasn't mates. Pat Maderma said they always came within a flip of winning and his sire was out from England and his dam was from the States. Friends would argue with Maderma and say he was in error to put up his horse the screamer for she'd lose in any case and he said a city talent by the name of Terra was considered the winner of the coming steeplechase. But he said he had the knowledge to come in when it was raining and irrelevantly mentioned that he knew the time of day. So he rose in their opinion. It was noted that the training of the screamer was conducted in a dark, mysterious way. Well, the day arrived in glory. It was a day of jubilation with the careless-hearted bushman for a hundred miles around and the rum and beer and whiskey came in wagons from the station. And the holy terror talent was the first upon the ground. Judge Ma'ard, with whose opinion it was scarcely safe to wrestle, took his dangerous position on the bark and sapling stand. He was what the local stiggins used to speak of as a vessel of wrath, and he had a bludgeon which he carried in his hand. Off you go, the starter shouted, as fell down a stupid jockey. Off they started, in disorder, left the jockey where he lay and they pumped and rolled and galloped down that rugged course and rocky till the thumping of the screamer could be heard a mile away. But she kept her legs and that gallop she was used to rugged courses and he hung her down the siding till the ridge began to play and he ploughed upon the furrow leaving earth and other riders in the, were blinded by the dust count in his wake. From the rock he struggled slowly. They were much surprised to find him close a beam of holy terror as across the plain they tore. Even louder still and denser went the clouds of dust behind him while in more divided splinters went the shattered rails before. Terror! Dead heat! They were counting. <laughs> terror! But the screamer stuck out a closer beam of holy terror as across the creek they swung. And Madame shouted loudly, Put your tongue out! Put your tongue out! And the screamer put its tongue out and it won by half a tongue.